how old were you when you became interested in playing guitar? About 10 or 11, something like that. Did you go to classes or were you self-taught? Um, I never went to classes, but I bought them tutor books in the early days and they were all Spanish flamenco stuff, so I junked them. And I used to work in a factory. <laughs> what, what doing? Making washing machines. <laughs> they were bloody awful. Did you ever think the band would achieve the success that you're now enjoying? Uh, yeah, because if, if I didn't believe that, I'd have packed in years ago. Because going got that tough and all that many setbacks and disappointments and no money and being not dull and, you know, social and having people snooping on you. Same people who go snooping on people who live together and that. It was just sickening, you know, because it got that bad for us, it could only get better, so we just we just kept doing and believing, and that's the only thing you can ever do. It just takes a long time. I've got an ovation of cool stick, um, three strats, and some Gibson SGs, and a flying V, which is this one that Paul's conveniently put on stands for me, because I couldn't be bothered. That one's one that I use not as much as I used to do in early Wheels of Steel days. I used to use it all the time. But it's a bit limiting some things, there's no vibral or arm or anything. And this one's me, one I've had since 1970, it's my favourite. It's had neck off it three times, you can see where it's been stuck back on. Every time it gets stuck on, I keep knocking it off. <laughs> and it's had a new pickup. It's had all new parts all the time. And it's got that logo on it, what, same guy who did that, did the first album logo, Mick Schofield. And I use this one mainly, even though it's old. It's just my favourite one, I use it on all the tours, it's been around the world with me, you know, three or four times. It's a good one, I like that one. Various accounts of your accident when oh. you lost the end of your finger. Um, could you please put the record yeah. straight for us? I want to be like Russ Conway <laughs> and Dave Allen. Uh, it was just an accident going out at the house one day when Steve came to pick me up to go to a concert. You know, wind blew the door shut and that way. And that way. And, you know, there's nothing I could have done or do, you know, it just happened. One of them things what happens. I went to see Tony Iommi because he had the same problem. Uh, he had an argument with a guillotine when he worked as a sheet metal worker. And uh, we just told me, he just told me what he used to do for exercises and things and it worked out at the end. You know, you can do things if you try. I once played a youth club in a little band I was in when I was 15. It was not, nothing, no big deal or anything, but this guy fetched a guitar for me to look at. He said, I've got a great guitar, do you like it? Do you want to buy it? It was six pounds, it was a Rosetti something. And I played it and it was that rubbish, I smashed it up. And that was it days before even Jim Hendrix came out. But I know Pete Townsend were doing it. And then I just, if I get mad, I just like doing it, you know. Some of them are playable, this one's been set fire to loads of times. And uh, it's still playable, it's been painted again. And it's had a different neck on it from America and different pickups and scratch because they all melt and buckle. But this one's had about three necks on it and it's still going. But sometimes they only last one show and they break too bad, you know. I don't try and break them, it just happens sometimes. <laughs>